has a probe such as that. There are also some pipe probes that would actually wrap around a suction line, for example, and you would use an electronic readout. Doesn't have to be electronic, but you see the little pocket thermometers? They're not bad if they're if they're calibrated and correct. It's kind of hard to get to them to read them sometimes, but they they're okay. There's also some attachments that would go to a multimeter for reading temperatures. Okay, a multimeter call that because it can read voltage, AC or DC. This particular one also has a capacitance checker built into it. Uh, with the proper attachments, you can also read amperage and temperatures. Okay, very nice. Here's one that a clamp on can me measure amp draw. Okay, you know what kind of meters do you need in this field? You definitely need something such as this. It doesn't have to be this brand, but you definitely need something good. When it comes to measuring anything, temperature, pressures, voltages, amperages, make sure you get something that's dependable. Okay, if you don't have something that you can trust, especially with a voltmeter, your life is dependent on that. Now, that sounds pretty extreme, but it's true. If you have a voltmeter that's not reading correctly and you test something and it shows that there's nothing there, you think it's safe. And you go stick your hand in it, you may get a bad surprise. Okay. Some of the other instruments I was talking about, this is one, looks like spaghetti right here, but there's some tubes that come out of there. This is for measuring pressures in a duct. Okay. We would actually hook up the two tubes to the line. We can measure very, very low pressures, fractions of an inch of water column. A couple other instruments that we're going to conclude here in just a moment. This day and time, with the cost of refrigerants, we don't want them leaking out. Electronic leak detector. Okay, how sensitive is that? Should be able to pick up a rate of less than quarter of a quarter inch a year. A leak rate of less than quarter inch a year. Sometimes you'll actually have enough residual and a hose to pick it up. I was hoping it would do that. Let's try it again. You hear it pick up there? That's residual within the hose itself. Here's a problem though. Hmm. You know, cost wise, I always <laughs> I'm gonna get lost on that one because different brands and different bells and whistles, if you will. Of course, the more bells and whistles, the more it's going to cost. But I always like to say that you're probably going to be looking at most of these uh, instrumentations up here, somewhere between 100 and 300. That seems to be the, the, the range. And that's a big range, but it depends on what it is. Um, and that's per tool, that's right? Per, yeah. yeah that's, uh, <laughs> per tool. You, you know, Thought you, had, thought you had a good deal going there. Yeah. Uh, one thing about this, this work, it's, it's expensive to get in tool-wise, but it also pays pretty good. Now, at the same time, I, I, I can tell you this firsthand. You never have enough instruments and tools. When you think that you got everything that you ever needed, you're going to find out you're going to need something else. That's just the name of the game. Yes. Some of these specialized tools, would they be checked out, uh, I guess, from your employer on the day that you may need something like that? Absolutely. You'd be responsible for the nuts or the, the wrenches and the, the multimeter and things like that. Now, good question. I can't answer what every uh, employer would do. I can tell you generally, though, most employers are going to expect you to have the basic tools that are going to expect you to probably have multimeters, possibly temperature uh, tools such as that or instrumentation. 
I, some companies would want you to have things such as a vacuum pump or, or a torch set. Some companies may actually furnish you or let you uh, check out, if you will, vacuum pumps, recovery units, things such as that. It depends upon the company, very much so. Uh, most employers realize, though, that you're working for them and they're going to furnish you the major tools. You know, let me say this about the tools, though. Even if it's company issue, uh, if you're issued a truck, remember somebody had to buy that truck. Sometimes we get into company vehicles and turn them a lot different than what we would our own. So treat their, their things as if it was your own. Uh, there's been some horror stories about that and some real bad feelings that have happened in the field where people misuse a company's tools or, or even the trucks. Uh, I tell you, leak detection is a big thing nowadays. And, you know, this seems like it would be the all-around one tool does it all for leak detection. Not so. What if you're on a roof on a windy day? This is not going to help you a bit. Um, other ways of leak detection, you have some dyes that can go into the system nowadays, fluorescent dyes, they have their faults too. On a bright sunny day you may not be able to see it. Plus it takes a little time for that to circulate through the system before it's going to show up. Ultrasound, that's another way. I have never been real successful with ultrasound. Uh, one way that I have always been successful with, never failed, that's bubbles. <clears throat> Just good old soap bubbles. Uh, if I see it bubbling, I know it's leaking. There's no question about it. Now, you know, when you have a real, real small leak, that's going to be hard to find, or if, especially if it's in a place inside of a coal or something like that, you may not be able to see it. That's where this comes in real nice. Okay. Now, Another tool that's become an absolute, something that you can precisely weigh the amount of refrigerant. The cost of refrigerant, they're up there. Plus, not only the cost, but also the amount. So important to charge correctly. If you're having to weigh in, you want something that can weigh in correctly. The old fish scales, I wouldn't trust them. I know that's real good for the fish stories, but it's not real good for the HVAC <laughs> industry. But get you a good set of scales, and believe it or not, a good set of scales is not as expensive as you think they would be. Okay, you can spend as much on postal scales or, or the old fish scales as some of these. Do y'all have any other tools you'd like to talk about today? Or are we pretty well? I've just done a really a real broad area of tools that you can expect to see. Uh, we do want you to have the tools to do the jobs here. One of the things that our program emphasizes is that when you leave here you should be ready to go to work. Part of that being ready to go to work is having the tools that a company would not furnish. Now, we don't expect you to go out and buy all these tools at one time. I don't. I wouldn't want to, but you need to start accumulating the tools as you go along. Well, the question is, is when are you going to need those tools? As you go in through here and you hit the labs, those labs are going to need certain tools. That would be a good time to get your tools that you need. That way it doesn't hit the pocketbook so bad. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Oh, yes. The last one you put down over there, you said that's the refrigerant yep. scale? Yes, that's, that, the, that's the way in the refrigerant. Okay. okay. Yes. And any of these up here, if you want to give them a try, come on up here. David, you might mention that that refrigerant scale is act, actually costs less than the old antiquated dial -a charge Yes. The the, uh, the book talks about the dial -a charge Right. The, the, the uh, <coughs> older dial -a charge I, I probably have one in the tool room, but I don't know why anybody would really want to use it nowadays because its accuracy is not near what you can get out of a, uh, a set of electronic scales. And as Mr. Ricky said, the cost 
you got something here that costs less than the old dollar charge. Less than half. Less, Less than, than half. half, yeah. So, you know, why why would I want to buy the A model when I can buy the mm -hmm. the new version, <laughs> the B model? <laughs> yeah. Or less. Right. For less. A lot less. Yeah. You know, I didn't didn't cover everything. There's no way that we could. But just keep in mind: air measurements, temperature measurements, pressure measurements. There is something that we can measure in uh, the air in feet per minute as it passes through. We can do a little math and figure out the volume. There again, it's, it's all about measuring. I, I am going to say this. I had a friend who <clears throat> taught me a lot about the HVAC field through his, uh, well, you ever been scolded? You know, when I say scolded and you didn't even realize he's being scolded until afterwards. This guy knew some systems better than anybody I've ever known. And I'm speaking of him in, in, as in, in the past because he is deceased. But this man could be anywhere in the world at any time. Of course, when I called him up, I didn't have any idea where he was at. And he would answer the phone like this. David, do you know what time it is where I'm at? No, no, I don't know what time it is. <laughs> Not where you're at. He said, well, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you've disturbed me. Now, what do you want? <laughs> His name was Bill. And I said, Bill, I'm having trouble with a, with a particular unit. Can you help me out? Well, tell me what you got. And I start ringing off different measurements and everything, and he'd ask me, did you check this? Did you check that? Yeah. Finally, he'd get to one that something I hadn't checked. He said, well, why hadn't you checked it? You woke me up, and you don't have the information? Go back and check it, and I'm gonna stay up a little while. And you call me back. Well, a little while I go, you know, I go check it out, and it would, sure enough, it lead me to the problem. I call him up and I say, "Hey, Bill," he says, "You got it, did you?" <laughs> yep, sure did. The man was telling me something. You take enough measurements, and you'll figure it out. Okay. If you don't take measurements, you're not gonna figure it out. You got to do analysis. That's what this is all about. Every one of these tools is about doing analysis, okay? And if you don't use them, you're not going to figure it out. So learn your tools. Learn how to figure it out.